So because everybody says that changes is the turning point for Dresden, I thought that I would do a spoilery reading vlog as I make my way through it. And someone had mentioned like offhand, I don't know if it was in Discord or on the channel, that I should really record my reading of the first line. And I thought, I literally just finished the last book, Turncoat, and I'm only just recovering from like the sobbing that overtook me as I read the last chapter. So why not? I'm gonna bring it up here in my Kindle app because I don't have them in paper form. I'm gonna read the first line. No, oh, it's not wanting to load for me. Even my computer is trying to shield me from the pain of continuing on with this right now. Let's give it another try. Well, <laughs> that is quite the first line. I am nine, nine chapters in, I think, to uh, changes. And there's a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess we'll address first things first. Susan keeping the secret of Dresden's daughter to herself is huge. And I think, at least for me, I don't know if anybody else felt this way, but for me, whenever Harry even thought about getting into a relationship with anybody else. I felt like this specter of Susan was hanging over everything. Like Jim Butcher could not make any real strides. Like I didn't even ever feel really connected to him with Lucio. I felt like there's always, like I said, this Susan specter that was hanging over everything. So I think that Butcher needed to find like a guillotine to like sever that attachment and is one way to do it. <laughs> Hiding information that important from someone who has the childhood trauma, the childhood experiences of Harry, I feel like that is one of the single worst things that you could do to him. And she obviously has known that. So I think that that serves kind of a dual purpose there. Like Harry is now free to move on. I personally hope that it's not on to Murphy because I really like them as friends. And the whole like friends to lovers thing, I, I'm not a huge fan of. I, I would think that they work well as as friends. But if if that is what it is, then I really love Murphy. Um, otherwise, I am like this series. One of the things that I'm loving about it so much is how the political tension is rising. So I just finished finish the scene where Harry like ran into the White Council, which... Harry, like, I know that you are overcome with emotions. I know that you are running off of pure, like, frustration and desperation and anger right now. But, like, do you think that when the most unstable of all of the wizards, who's already regarded with suspicion, do you think that you are going to be able to run in there and get anything accomplished except threats of death from the other members of the White Council? But... Harry is Harry and he is driven by his heart, which is why we love him. Uh, I did really like, so the last chapter I read was the one after that where Lucio takes him to like the worry room and then we get the scene with him and the Merlin and the Merlin forbids him from doing anything and Lucio is going to be on his side. These political maneuverings, these kind of the, the different factions within the White Council, what's happening. Like, I don't know now if like, is, is Susan doing this because she knew that the Duchess was going to try to sue for peace? Is she trying to make the White Council her pawn as she did during Harry's duel? Or is she genuinely looking for Harry's help? It, it has gotten so much more complex since those very first uh, cases in the first couple of books. And it makes me so excited. I love this series so much. I really want to know what happens. I am here for Harry and Murphy going down to South America to like kick some vengeful ass like to to get in there and and get back against the the red court but there's so much riding on this from a personal standpoint from a professional standpoint for harry there's just so many different moving pieces and i am really excited at how this has built up i can see why people really like this book so far it's got a great hook it is the way that it's building up, I'm really enjoying, and I am equal parts like scared and excited to get to the rest of it.
So I finished another nine chapters. So I have doubled the amount that I've read and I still have a lot of thoughts. This is very fast paced as I've come to expect from the last few. Um, I have to say that, what was it, small favor. Small favor was just like action scene after action scene after action scene. Uh, so it's not quite at that level yet, but there is a lot happening and it has been very intriguing so far. I... It, this does make me miss Susan. I was really starting to like her character when she left in uh, Grave Peril. And I do think that her and Harry make a really good team. But obviously, after this betrayal, I don't think that they have a future together. And I am wondering, still, just like Murphy said, and I said in the last clip, like, I is everything on the up and up here? Like, is there some manipulation going on by Susan? I guess only time will tell. But I do still have my suspicions in that way. One theory that I've had for a while that I was going to share now because this character just got mentioned again is about Ramirez, the other warden. I I don't know. I feel very suspicious of Ramirez and I think it's and this is why I don't like reading mystery novels is because I eventually I become suspicious of like everybody. I just start thinking that nobody is good, everything is bad, and so Ramirez like He's young and a warden, which I think in itself, I know that they're in a war and, and you know, but I feel like he's positioned himself to be in this, this place of power. He seems to be present a lot of the time when bad things happen. And I know that he's usually helping Harry, but it just seems like a good position for a mole to be in. And I don't know, we know that he's good at lying and he is, he's got that kind of like casual charm that endears people to him. He's become friends with Harry. I don't know. I just, I feel suspicious. And if I am wrong, then I sincerely am sorry to Warden Mar Ramirez because I think that on the surface, he's a good character and I like him, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I am enjoying the extra tidbits we're getting about Harry's mom. Over the last couple of books, we've gotten even more information about her, about her personality, about what she was like, what she did. And even though I feel like the Leah giving Dresden this gemstone from his mom is a huge plot convenience, like, ah, oh, yes, this thing that I need at this exact moment is finally coming to me. Um, but I don't mind the plot conveniences in Dresden because I, I feel like they fit the aesthetic well, like that noir detective kind of setup. I am forgiving of a lot of plot things that I probably wouldn't be as forgiving for in other series, but... In order for her to be owed such a huge favor from Leah, I feel like Dresden's mom must have been so cool. I wish that she was still there. Obviously, that, that cannot be possible, but I always enjoy getting the extra tidbits about her. Uh, it looks like they're going to Mexico. I don't know why I said South America in the first clip, but it looks like things are going to happen in Mexico, and I'm excited to see what happens next. Okay. When Jim Butcher named this book Changes, he did not have to be so literal. He did not have to change so many things the last so I've just decided I guess I'm checking in every nine chapters because that's the way that it's worked out but the last nine chapters have so much has happened the blue beetle the blue beetle can't be gone forever Harry's staff his apartment is burned down now like what is happening there's too many things happening it's too much it's too much and I'm like not even halfway about halfway I don't know how much more I can take. Okay. <laughs> so I'm at chapter 36. I have not read chapter 36 yet. And I have wanted to stop multiple times to talk because holy crap, these last nine chapters. Also, there's some sort of fire truck outside. I'm not sure why. But Harry is now at the winter night, which... I had thought like going into this series that this was going to happen at some point and I, I actually thought that the book White Knight was like White Knight with a K and that that was going to be the book where Harry became the Winter Knight. So I have been suspecting that this might happen. Who knows? Maybe he's going to find a way out of it. But in this particular book, I did not expect this to happen. I have actually been expecting, like low-key expecting for the last couple of books for Lash to come back in some way. Like there was mention of really severe headaches for Harry. And I was like, oh, maybe she is in there somewhere like biding her time. And she didn't get totally burned out. And she is going to be there to save the day for Harry at some point. So that was my theory about how this was going to happen, how he was going to be able to, you know, heal himself, et cetera, et cetera. But this is terrifying. Like I, right down to the moment when he, 
slit the throat of the last night. I did not expect him to do it. And this is such a huge shift. This is, I can see, I can see there are so many reasons why this is called changes, but like that in itself is such a huge shift for Harry's character. I remember how much it weighed on him when he accidentally took a human life. And even though the old Winter Knight was like a scum, you know, of a human being, I still think this is going to be huge for Harry. And I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen from here. And now, so where I just left off, they just landed like face first on the table of the Earl King. So he's back. And, you know, the last time Harry saw him in, was a deadbeat? It was, you know, he was not happy. <laughs> it's not like he enjoyed being entrapped by Harry. Uh, so I guess we're going to see where it goes from here. There's so many questions. I can understand Harry wanting to sacrifice everything for his child. But I don't know. I feel like this is going to take some dark turns. And I'm very nervous. It's very difficult to stop reading now. But I have to. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, so I'm only at chapter 42, but I felt like this was an appropriate place to pause because probably from here I will finish the rest of the book. But the battle with the Earl King was amazing. Jim Butcher is so good at writing combat. He makes it so exciting. You can visualize it so well. I am a big fan, and that was a really cool fight. And then the, <laughs> the scene immediately afterwards where... Leah gives them their outfits is just so Dresden. Like, it's just such a Dresden moment. We had this really intense fight. We're going off to save my daughter. This is a big plot, a big conspiracy. But let's have a fashion show. <laughs> so it's just like one of those moments of good fun. And I would really love to see Harry and Susan in their outfits. I guess I'll have to look for some fan art or something after this. But that is an excellent image that I would love to have. I have long wanted, moving forward a little bit, Murphy to be a Knight of the Cross. I don't necessarily think this is going to happen because for all the reasons that have been stated in the books, like she loves her job so much, but I had been wondering if she was going to lose her job and maybe that, you know, but that is probably not the most noble reason to become a Knight. But the fact that she has one of the swords for this fight, like ever since she touched it for the first time a couple of books back, I've been like, yes. What would I give for a Murphy Knight? I would would love it. I still am not sure where this is going to go. Like after this is over, are we then going to be following Harry as the, the knight of the winter night? I don't know. But this is so intense. I still feel like there must be a scheme that we're missing, whether it's from Martin or Susan or like there's some element that is also going to come into play because I feel like it's not just going to be a we'll say straightforward, like obviously it's gonna be very difficult to rescue this little girl, but I don't know. There's something, something in there that makes me feel like something else is going to happen, but it is so intense. Mouse, mouse talking. Oh my gosh. Terrifying mouse. I love mouse. I didn't think it was possible for me to love mouse anymore, but this book is making lots of things possible. I adore the part where they all became canines and then Mouse is the leader and he could talk to them. Like, how perfect is that? But the Red Court vampires have just found them. All hell is going to break loose. I am, as I have been since the beginning of this book, excited and terrified. But I am sure the next time I check in will be post-book. So let's see how it goes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. I don't even really remember where I left off, I think, right before the battle. The battle was really cool, but I feel like the cool <laughs> the coolness is lost in the pain now. Poor Harry. Murphy was amazing. I have not vl <laughs> vlogged a really intense book like this before, and I feel like I am not coherent enough to do this, but I had suspected that something was up with Martin, but he pulled a, like double, a double betrayal. So, you know, he was working for good, but using evil. I admired Leah's kindness at the end. 
and poor Harry to let his daughter go after all that. And then that very last scene, the people who read this when it came out, oh my god, <laughs> like having to wait a year to get the next book. Okay, enough time has passed that I feel like I can string together some semi-coherent thoughts, but <laughs> I really enjoyed this book. If you could not tell as I was reading through, this was excellent. It lived up to the hype, which how rare is it to find a book that is so incredibly hyped. So it is so well spoken of by everybody who loves the series. People say like, oh yeah, you know, but wait till you get to changes. And so you start to wonder like, how good can it possibly be? Like I'm building it up to be something and then it absolutely meets those expectations. And not only does it meet those expectations, it like <laughs> breaks your heart as it does so. And I felt like I had been shielding myself from that. I felt like, you know, something bad is going to happen. Something big is going to happen for Harry and I need to prepare myself for that. Well, there is no preparing yourself for the end of this book. Those four lines, how does anybody prepare themselves for that? That just Harry has gone through so much over the course of this book in terms of taking up the mantle of the winter night, finding out he had a daughter, the betrayal from Susan, having to end her life and then send his daughter away, the reveal. If there's something in a book that can make the reveal that Ebenezer is his grandfather look paltry in comparison, then that's when you know that some intense stuff is happening. Like, ugh, there's so much packed into this tiny little book. I understand now. I understand. Harry, at the, like that ending scene before that scene, which by the way, like finding out that he's been shot and then it being the end and you not getting another book for a year, like I can't even imagine. But the end where he's just there and everything that meant something to him has been stripped away, including his relationships, because he doesn't know how much longer he's going to remain himself, which is of the utmost importance to him. Like that thought that Mab could strip away his will, like everything has been taken from Harry. And I just, you, you have no choice but to ache with sympathy for him. And that is what makes this book so good. It's not the battle scenes, which are epic. Like, again, a battle scene where you have Murphy charging in, standing up against the will of the, this collective of ancient vampires, wielding one of the holy swords. If that is not the pinnacle of your book, then that says something about the book because that was incredibly epic. But... It's, it's really the emotion that this rings from you. I cannot fathom having to wait a year to get to the next book. I can only imagine what kinds of turns this is going to take. I, I don't even want to think about it because <laughs> there are so many plot threads where nothing good can come of it. But I have to believe that Harry's will is strong, that he will be able to maintain himself and you know, he gets himself out of some prickly situations. So I guess we shall see where it goes from here. But I would just like to say that changes lived up to all of the hype. I am wounded <laughs> after reading it. And I cannot wait to read the next one. Anyway, that's it. Those are my rambling, semi coherent thoughts. Hopefully this was enjoyable. I feel like this would be the kind of book when I recommend this to people that I will be like clinging to their every reaction. So hopefully that <laughs> that made this at least somewhat enjoyable to watch. And I'm sure with the speed that I'm racing through these books, I will be coming out with some Dresden content before long. <laughs> Bye.